Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about clocks. So these are a couple of clocks that I've built. Um, this is an old one I built several years ago. This is one I built uh, yesterday. So the motivation for this is uh, when we had the baby, uh, my wife wanted a clock for the baby's room so she could tell what time it is. So she asked me for a clock. I said, well, you're in luck. You know, there's one thing I like to build. It's clocks. There's clocks. I've got piles of them that I've built over the years. So the one I set up was this Nixie tube clock here. Um, and this worked out great um, while the baby was little and couldn't get around. Uh, but these days the baby's very mobile and her favorite activity is smashing things. Uh, so a Nixie tube clock, I deemed it no longer safe for the baby room. Because this is a high voltage in here, these are glass tubes. They're old design tubes from you know who knows when and who knows where they're made and who knows what's inside of them. It uh, wouldn't be a good thing for baby to take and smash and get into. Uh, so then I built this other clock here. Um, this is just a plain ordinary LED clock. Um, very safe, no high voltage, uh, no exposed glass parts. Uh, both of these are propeller um, microcontroller based projects. So big chip and there's a propeller. And both of them are GPS synchronized, so they never need to be set. Uh, let me turn out uh, the bright lights, and you should be able to see a little bit better. Um, you can see typical orange uh, Nixie tubes versus uh, blue LEDs. Um, so I'm going to spend some time um, going into the designs of these two uh, projects and all of this will eventually find its way up on my website with schematics and uh, pointers to the Osh Park boards and anything else if you want to build your own. Uh, so let's get started. So here's the schematic for the uh, Nixie Tube Clock. So it's been a while since I uh, built this project so it's going to take me a little bit to remember what all of this does. I do know that this part here is the high voltage power supply unit. Uh, 12 volts comes in and uh, your high voltage for your Nixie tubes uh, comes out here. This is based on the TL494. It's a uh, switching power supply so it uses a MOSFET and an inductor um, and a capacitor. Uh, that generates your high voltage. There is a potentiometer um, over here which lets you set the voltage. Um, the supply, I believe, I have described on uh, one of the pages on my website. Um, there's also a low voltage power supply. Low voltage power supply unit. Um, this uh, takes 12 volts um, from the wall wart, uh, regulates it down to 5 volts, and then it regulates the 5 volts down to 3.3. Over here we have our parallax propeller. That's our propeller CPU. So the big chip is a CPU. It's got a crystal. Uh, it's got an EEPROM which holds its programming. Uh, there's some pull-ups for the uh, communication with the EEPROM. Um, it's pretty much it. I think I did run a bunch of wires out here to a header that I could use for buttons or whatever. I don't think I ever use those. And then there's a bunch of I.O. that will go off to peripherals. Um, there is over here Dallas real-time clock. So my uh, my initial, when, when I first imagined this project, it was going to run off of a real-time clock chip with a crystal oscillator, so there's a crystal oscillator um, interface to the propeller, and that's how I would keep time. Um, later, I decided I would much rather run it off of a GPS, because a GPS you don't have to set. Um, so what I did is I made the real-time clock optional, and then I put on a header for a UP501, and a header EM406. Uh, so these were two different uh, GPS modules that were commonly available at SparkFun at the time. Uh, the UP501 I rather liked because uh, it was through-hole, very compatible. Um, 
2.54 millimeter headers so you could just plug it into your breadboard or easily plug it into your PC board or whatever. The EM406 had like a finer pitch connector and a little ribbon cable special connector you had to buy. Um, so your option was you could either use the real-time clock or you could use the UP501 GPS or you could use the EM406 GPS. So at this point we've got um, the time flowing into the propeller. We need to get that time on the display. So what we have over here is Nixie tubes. Um, and, and I used a, a multiplexing approach so I light up two tubes at a time. Um, so you'll see here is a driver K155 driver. Um, so the K155 it has four bits of input which will select which segment um, cathode to ground. Um, so what it does is it grounds cathodes on two tubes at a time and then we will select which tube we want via the anode. So there are um, current limiting resistors on each tube which then go to these anode pins and the anode drivers are over here and these use a couple high voltage transistors. So with the propeller it will have one of its CPU cores that is constantly multiplexing these displays. Um, what it will do is it will turn on one of the anodes and then it will light up the tubes that are connected to that anode uh, to display the digits then it will turn that anode off, turn on the other anode and light up the other tubes. Um, so it's constantly displaying two tubes and then the other two tubes and then back and forth. It's happened so fast that you can't, uh, you, you can't see that it's multiplexing between the two. The reason for multiplexing is that it reduces some of your part count and some of your I.O. requirements. So you only need two of these K155 driver chips. You only need a total of 10 bits of I.O. to run the display. So four bits for each driver plus one bit uh, for each um, anode driver over here gives you um, 10 bits to run the display. Most of my newer Nixie tube projects I switched to just using a single driver per tube and just doing that much more I.O. and not doing the multiplexing but you know this really in a four digit clock like this the multiplexing worked fine. Um, so also over here I put on A Dallas temperature um, IC. This could be used to implement a thermometer instead of a clock. So my idea was, you know, let's make this board so it can be repurposed for a few different things. So it could be a clock, it could be a GPS automatic clock, or it could be a thermometer. It does all those things. Um, this schematic will be up on the website as well as the uh, PC board will be on Osh Park if anyone wants to build one of these. Here is the Nixie Tube clock. Um, you can see the parallax propeller, uh, four Nixie tubes, IN12 Nixie tubes, the uh, UP501 GPS module. Over here would be the high voltage power supply, the TL494 potentiometer um, to set the voltage, um, inductor, capacitor, um, MOSFET. Over here is the low voltage supply, the 5 volt, 3.3 volt regulators. The K155D chips are up there right next to the Nixie tubes and then there's some uh, drivers on the sides to uh, select which digits to display. Okay, let's plug it in. It'll take it a second to get its GPS lock and update the time to the current time. In the meantime, I'm going to shut off light and then we'll just give it a bit to uh, synchronize. There we go, it is synchronized. 
So let's take a look at the LED clock. Um, it's a lot like the Nixie tube clock, a little bit different uh, because we're using LED display so there's no high voltage power supply. There is still a low voltage power supply that has got the 5 volt and 3.3 volt regulators. Um, I still have the Dallas RTC if I wanted to build one of these without a GPS and I still have GPS headers down here for a UP501 GPS or a EM406 GPS We still have the Dallas temperature sensor in case you wanted to do uh, turn this into a thermometer. And we still have uh, the propeller CPU. So all of that hasn't changed. So what has changed is the display. Um, rather than using Nixie tubes, we're going to use um, LED displays. LED displays are low voltage. Uh, no worry about shocking the baby. No worry about hazardous glass or you know weird 1960s materials. Uh, this should be very safe. So these are um, four uh, large displays we're going to use. These are uh, one inch common cathode displays. Um, each one of them was going to be multiplexed separately. So a seven segment display has um, seven segments that comprise the digit plus one um, pin for the decimal point gives you eight different uh, pins for this. Um, so they're all down here going into this bus. They go through these resistors. Um, these resistors are for current limiting so you don't burn out your LED. Each resistor is hooked up to a different I.O. pin on the prop. Um, that allows us to light the seven segments plus the decimal point. Over here, um, well, so that was the anode. The cathodes are common, so each display has a separate cathode. And I ran those down here into a 3 to 8 DMUX. So this will supply the uh, cathode. So you send a 3-bit um, address into the DMUX that will ground one of these outputs. All of the other outputs will be high impedance. So when you want to run this display, you will first ground the first digit, and then you will light up your segments. Then you will ground the second digit, light up your segments, ground the third digit, light up your segments, ground the fourth digit, light up your segments. And then you repeat that over and over again, doing it so fast that the human eye can't notice. Because I had room on the board and I had some other displays, there's also some footprints on the board for three digit displays. Uh, two of those together will give you uh, six digits. These are kind of smallish displays, uh, but you could use those to give you a clock with seconds. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's look at the boards. Uh, you can see here's the propeller. Um, here are the voltage regulators, the 5 volt regulator, 3.3 volt regulator, uh, the power jack, 3 to 8 decoder. So this would normally be the resistors uh, for setting current limiting on the 7 segment displays. Uh, but in this case, the forward voltage of these displays is so high and the voltage output by uh, the propeller is low enough that you don't actually need any current limiting. It's actually already a little too dim. Um, what else is there? Here is the GPS module. This is the uh, UP501. And then here is the EEE prom that holds the program for the propeller. So you can see I've got four displays in. These are blue displays. They have about a three volt uh, forward voltage. I put two of them in right side up and two of them in upside down. And what that allows you to do is to use these two decimal points as something that looks kind of like a colon. Um, that's it, let's try it out. Twelve 
volt power supply. And it is started up. Let me uh, dim the lights. Currently says it's 359. There, now it's updated to 511, which is the actual time. Um, took it a second to get the GPS fix. Try to get rid of some of this room light that's interfering with it. There we go, now you can see it really well, 511. I am going to try getting some red displays. The red displays will have a lower forward voltage. I'll be able to make them brighter. I'll be able to make the clock more visible, even in a brightly lit room. Next task up is to assemble a case. So I have my cases typically made at Pinoco. This is laser cut acrylic. I've got like front panels. I've got back panel. I've got over here is like a cutout that will form the sides. There's some pieces that will go together. Uh, so I'm going to take all this acrylic out of here, peel the backing off of it, and build a case. Here is the completed clock mounted in its acrylic case. Good and durable. It's got a hole in the side for the power. Let's try powering it up. And let me turn out the light. There, it's uh, synced to the current GPS time. It's 5.41 p.m. here. Oh, there we go. There's some great pictures. Yeah. Yeah. On the cord. Whoa, yeah. Very cool. So it turns out my fears about the clock being not bright enough were unfounded. Uh, not only that, but it was actually deemed too bright for the baby's room at night. Uh, but fortunately, when you build your own clock, you can modify it. So what I've done uh, may not be too easy to see uh, because I've got the lights dimmed a little bit in here, but I've added a photo resistor as well as a capacitor and a uh, standard resistor. Hook those up to a pin on the propeller so it can read the uh, amount of light in the room. And then when it gets dark, the display will automatically dim. So, bright room, dark room. And then I've adjusted these thresholds uh, based on the amount of uh, light in the baby's room, what it's like when it's um, when the lights are on and the windows are open and you want a bright clock versus what it's like at night when the windows are closed and the lights are off and you want a dark room. And... Uh, Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.